What's going on guys, I'm Tao, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to get into the industry of cybersecurity. About a couple weeks ago, I had someone comment on one of my videos saying how should I best go about getting into the industry of cybersecurity. So anyway, I got that comment and I was like, that's a really good video idea and something I wish I had had whenever I first started, in addition to a day in life video, which I've already made link up here if you want to go check that out. The process in getting into cybersecurity is going to be a six step process, maybe even only a five step process, depending on where you're at, but I'll just cover that later in the video. Also, before we get into the video, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, so that way other people just like you who want to learn how to become a cybersecurity professional can see this video. All right, so step one, this is the optional step is learning the very basics of computers. So if you don't have any real computer skills at all, you're gonna want to go ahead and learn the basics. And by doing this, I mean learning how computers work, function on a basic level. I recommend you for the basic hardware and software troubleshooting type stuff to study for and take the A plus CompTIA A plus exam. It is a two part exam, one covers hardware, one covers software. The reason I recommend this is it can help you get a job somewhere because they'll see that you have a certification in addition to giving you a good benchmark, so to speak, to evaluate your knowledge. It also does cover some cybersecurity stuff, so that is worth noting. For networking, I highly recommend studying for the CompTIA Network Plus or the Cisco CCNA certification. Now the CCNA certification is a lot more advanced and covers a lot more networking stuff. But if you just want a brief overview of networking in general, then I recommend going for the Network Plus. This is what I did. It seemed to do pretty good um, as far as a baseline of basic networking knowledge goes. After this, I recommend you learn some programming. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, but at least learn the fundamentals, how variables work, functions work, etc. Because you're definitely going to use that if you're doing any sort of scripting or whatever. You can use YouTube for this, you can use Codecademy, Pluralsight if you happen to have a membership there. Some of these like Codecademy and Pluralsight are paid, um, but YouTube is free and there's a whole lot of free coding tutorials out there. You just have to find one that you like. In fact, I'll link up here a Python for Beginners playlist that I made that shows pretty much all of the basic fundamentals of programming, so I do recommend that if you're just getting started. Step two, or the first required step, is to learn the concepts of security. So within the industry of cybersecurity, no matter what specialization you're in, you're gonna wanna know the concepts, and these concepts really are very well encapsulated within the security plus and the study material for this. So, so far I've mentioned three certifications, if you get all three of these certifications, A plus, Network plus, and Security plus, that can definitely help you land a job. Um, Security plus is good for certain DOD certification levels too if you're here in America. However, the study material for that, especially if you're using something like Professor Mesha, which I'll also link up here and in the description down below, is really good and it covers all the basic concepts that in the more advanced stages of learning about this, you will be applying in the future. The Security Plus is really what helped me get my basic understanding for cybersecurity down and I really enjoyed studying for that as it gave me the basic fundamentals to moving forward into more technical aspects. The second required step or the third if you include the optional step, we'll just go with step number two, is find an old computer and load it with a version of Linux. This is one of the things that I really did before I even took the Security Plus, A Plus or Network Plus and is one thing that I think really gave me a competitive edge when applying for my initial internship. And that is because I already knew the fundamentals of operating systems and programming and how they worked. Now when I loaded things with my old computer with Linux, it took a lot of trial and error. It didn't always work the first time and it was a lot of learning how to Google well. If you know how to search things up on the internet, that's going to be a big help for you in the future pursuing your career. Honestly, that's probably one of the most important skills, and if you don't take away anything else out of this video, is learn how to use Google, or Bing, or DuckDuckGo, for that matter, very effectively. Learn how to craft the questions so that way you can find the answers you need on the internet. That's what I did, and that's what's going to help you succeed. I recommend loading it with Arch Linux. I just made a video on how to do that up here. If you're really, if you're trying to load your daily driver with something that you want to be stable, and you're not super great with figure out how to use things on Linux, I recommend Ubuntu, link up here as well. There's a lot of pop-up card links in this video, honestly, a lot more than normal. Anyways, I just have a video about all this stuff, but Arch Linux is really good as it gives you a very good technical understanding of how everything works 
as far as Linux goes, how the whole operating system is put together through the installation process, which a lot of people say is complicated and it can be for the first couple of times, but it really teaches you the fundamentals of how an operating system is installed and how Linux in general is built. Also, their wiki is very awesome and it has pages pretty much about almost every aspect of the OS and lets you completely customize it to fit your needs. Step three is pass some certifications. So if you follow this exactly, which you don't have to do, this is just a general recommendation video for everyone, I recommend looking at the CYSA Plus certification by CompTIA, or if you want to branch out and not do some CompTIA, look at the SSCP certification by ISC Squared. Now these both cover two separate points of view pretty much from within the more advanced cybersecurity industry. One, the security analyst certification focuses on if you're a security analyst and the SSCP focuses on being a cybersecurity professional, which would theoretically be the next step above in the corporate ladder and therefore the escalation of incidents and all, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of scenario based questions. I have reviews on both of those two videos, in fact, on the CYSA Plus video that I'll link up here. They're also linked down in the description if you're interested in those or just go check out my channel if you want more videos like that. Step four is finally when you, step four is get a job. A job is really going to provide you with a whole lot of valuable experience and honestly experience is one of the most valuable things in the cybersecurity industry or pretty much most IT industries for that matter. You'll see a ton of jobs require three to five years of experience. If you can find one that will let you get in without having the three to five years to experience or maybe just a good beginner position like a SOC analyst or a cybersecurity analyst position, that's really great and will give you a whole lot of good experience. You could even possibly get a cybersecurity engineer position. It depends on your level of enthusiasm and how many side projects you've done in your portfolio that you can show people, hey, I know how to do this because I've done it already. But anyways, it really just depends. Step five is specialize. So there are eight big areas within cybersecurity that you can choose to specialize in. The first four I'm going to list are in the technical domains of cybersecurity and the last four are in more of a conceptual domain. So the first is incident response and forensic analysis. So this is like if an incident happens, you're like, okay, you you know you know what to do whenever you go to a computer that maybe somebody hacked, you know, you know, unplug it from the network, analyze what happened, write up reports, things like that. Next is penetration testing, which is the one that I'm personally trying to specialize in. And this is where you basically learn how to ethically hack into theoretical companies um, when you're just learning it's theoretical it's not actual companies and you provide them with reports that say hey this is what the all the holes are in your network infrastructure so that way they can patch them up they'll pay you to do that and you have contracts and all that kind of thing so I don't advise hacking anyone without their permission as that is illegal and not good to do next is secure DevOps so development operation sort of things you know knowing how to build code securely, that kind of thing, which leads into secure software and development. This is the process of making sure your development processes for software are secure, you know, auditing the software, doing code audits, etc. The conceptual stage you have architecture and policy, data loss prevention, which is preventing data from being leaked out to your organization or being destroyed, etc. Governance, risk and compliance, and then identity and access management. So the last one could also kind of delve over as well as data loss prevention, especially delve over into the technical side. But for the most part, it's pretty much all conceptual. So now, one of the big reasons you might be wanting to get into cybersecurity is the money. And I will go ahead and tell you that the average salary for a entry-level cybersecurity analyst is $69,000. However, that varies by region, even by city, depending on where your demand is, how far you're willing to travel to get a job that pays that much and if you're willing to relocate, etc. All right, so that's all for today's video. If you like this video, please feel free to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Make sure to hit that notification bell and select all notifications so that way you're notified every time I post a new video on Mondays and Fridays. Also, follow me on Instagram at TalKelly3 if you want some behind the scenes and some more updates and some sweet fall photography pics, at least for now. Make sure it'll switch over in the winter and the summer style stuff. But for some behind the scenes tips as well, make sure to follow me over there. I'm Tao, and I'll see you in the next video.